I've got a confession to make. I have always wanted to be the mother of a daughter. And I think this goes back to when I was role playing with my Barbies and my baby dolls growing up. I'm pretty sure that they only made female dolls in those days. So that's probably where the root of the bias came from. And this desire really intensified when I was learning about gender identity issues in women's studies classes at the University of Richmond. I decided that I wanted to be the role model for a girl. I really wanted to have a daughter so that I could help her build her self-esteem. I could help her build her confidence. And importantly, I really wanted to help a daughter learn how to succeed in what is still a predominantly male world of work. But as luck would have it, 16 years ago, I gave birth to my only child, a son, and after a little bit of consideration, I decided I wouldn't throw him back. And I'm glad I didn't, because he's actually turned out to be pretty kind and funny and smart. And I'm thinking now that he's made my life infinitely better, so perhaps he can also make life better for all of the women that he encounters along his way. So what lessons do I owe a son? How can I teach him to be a colleague, a boss, a spouse, who will really work to make the world better for women? Now, I started thinking about this actually a few months ago. He was doing an assignment for his history class. They had a unit on the women's movement. And so the assignment was to interview someone in your family, a female in your family, about the challenges that they had had in life. So he says to me, well, mom, I guess it makes sense for me to interview Nana, who's his grandmom, because chances are she's had a lot more challenges than you have had because, you know, those were in the older times. All right, there's some logic to that. If you go back to my son's great-grandmother, my grandmom, she was actually a secretary in a textile mill. And it was not a career it actually wasn't even a choice. She simply had to work to pay the medical bills from a child who had died after a really lengthy hospital stay. And she and I never talked about it, and I regret that. But I imagine that if we had, that she probably had some pretty good stories of what it was like to be a secretary in a small town in the 1930s. Now, my son's grandmother and I, my mom, we have talked about it. And I do know some of the very overt challenges that she faced. She was a minister of education in a church. And she had a male boss and male colleagues who felt that a woman, even a woman who had graduated summa cum laude from Wake Forest University, couldn't be allowed to handle a budget or to lead a meeting. Now, in my 25-year-plus career at companies like Frito-Lay, Yahoo, Nintendo, Kidzania, the challenges that I have faced have been less overt than that. But they've been every bit as real. And in some ways, I think they've been just as difficult because I've been trying to push further ahead in my career. But I've realized that until lately, I've been pretty hesitant to share those stories with my son. And I think that that's natural. As parents, we really don't like to tell you guys about painful and difficult things that we face. That's just natural. But I've started to wonder, is that really fair to my son? And importantly, is that really fair to the women that he's going to work with, to pretend like the battle's been fought and won, and to pretend like equality and meritocracy already exist today. You know, change doesn't happen 
until you first realize that something is broken. And then you're much more likely to take action if somehow you personally feel impacted by what's broken. So if I want my son to be an advocate for women, I think maybe it starts with taking the time to tell him my stories. So my son knows, for example, that I graduated from Harvard with an MBA, and he has gone to reunions with me, and he's sat in that very intimidating HBS classroom. But I need him to know that of the 200 women in my graduating class, only 75% are still working full time. And that compares to 95% of the men. And I need him to know that that is not because those women were less ambitious. And it is certainly not because those women are less talented, but mostly because they found it too difficult to juggle the demands of a full-time career and family. You know, my son knows that I've had the opportunity to work for some pretty cool companies. He has been to lots of take your kid to work days with me, and he's actually been very helpful on a lot of work projects that I've done. But I need him to know about how many times I've been the only woman in the meeting. And I need him to know how it felt to be asked to get the coffee or to take the notes, even when there were men who were a lot more junior than me in the room. And I need him to know how incredibly lonely it is to be the only woman at that business dinner and hear jokes and comments that are really inappropriate and to not know how to respond in a way that doesn't make the situation even more uncomfortable. Now, my son knows that as EVP of sales and marketing at Nintendo, I had the opportunity to present in front of thousands of people up on stage at E3. But I need him to know, as much as honestly I'd even like to forget about it, about the hundreds of hateful, misogynistic comments that were written about me online simply because I'm a female who is speaking in what is a dominantly male video game industry. Now, my son knows that I serve on a number of public boards, mainly because we eat at Red Robin a lot and we shop pretty exclusively at Nordstrom. But I need him to know that only 17% of the 5,000 plus board seats in the S&P 500 are held by women. And that that number really hasn't shifted much in the past decade. Now, like I'm sure all of you, most of his generation, my son absolutely appreciates how far women have come, but I need him to know how far there is left to go. My son absolutely believes in equality. He believes that women should have the same opportunities, that women should make the same pay for the same work. He believes that mothers can be as successful as fathers. He believes that everyone should be evaluated on their performance, that it should be a level playing field. And you know, actually, that's a really great start. Research by Catalyst has shown that a strong belief in fair play is one of the leading indicators of how much a man will support women in the workplace. But I need my son to know that the playing field is far from level. And I want to inspire him to be the kind of man who will actively work to make it so. So along with raising his awareness through my stories, there are three lessons that I'd like to teach my son. The first is that I want him to be a colleague that encourages women around him, encourages them to speak up, to share their ideas, to go for it. 
This starts now in the classroom, and it'll continue in college and throughout his career. I want him to be like my friend, Kirk Schroeder. Now in college, I studied really hard and I make good grades, but like a lot of women, I tended to underestimate myself. And so sometimes I just shot too low. It was Kirk who said to me, Cammy, you gotta run for student government. You gotta apply for that internship, that scholarship that everyone wants. And you know what? When I won that election, when I got that scholarship, all of a sudden my confidence started to grow and I started to aim higher. Now this confidence gap between men and women is really well documented. Um, let me just give you a simple example. If I share with you the notion of applying for a job, then research suggests that the average man, when looking at the list of job requirements, will say, awesome, I've got three out of five, Wah, I'm a shoe in Whereas the woman, looking at that same list of requirements, is more likely to say, eh, I've only got four out of five, there's no way they would ever choose me, um, I guess I better wait to apply for something that uh, I'm more qualified for. When my son sees women around him underestimating themselves, I want him to encourage them. I want him to be the one to say, you gotta apply for that job. You gotta go after that grant. You gotta start that new business. Now another way that this confidence gap shows up is in women's reluctance to speak up. And again, there's tons of research that documents this, but I think that we all observe it in the classroom and in the work environment. Women don't speak up, and what's worse is sometimes when they do, they're interrupted or they're ignored. My son can make a difference in this by being the kind of man who never interrupts a woman, never interrupts anyone, and who actively listens to them and encourages them to share their ideas. Now the second lesson that I want to teach my son is I want him to be a boss that champions women and mentors them. Now, male bosses have had a significant impact on my career. One of my first uh, bosses, longtime mentors, John Compton, was the one who championed aggressively to get me into my first general management position early in my career. And I was one of the first women in this position, and I came from a non-traditional marketing background rather than the more traditional sales background, so I wasn't an obvious choice at all. John had to stick his neck out to push me into the job. And you know what? I rewarded that risk by being the top performing general manager in the country both years that I was in the job. My first assignment to a public board of directors came because another influential male, Dusty McCoy, had the courage to say that he wanted a woman on his board of directors. Now, he didn't compromise at all on the requirements for the job. He demanded very rigorous functional expertise and experience, but he told his governing and nominating committee that he wanted them to push further to find a female in that role. Now, once women get into these leadership roles, it's really important that they get good feedback and good coaching. That same boss who pushed me into the general management role was great at giving me feedback. He told me what was good, and he told me what was not so good. And when he had some criticism to deliver, he didn't soft pedal it. He smacked me right between the eyes with it, but he did it in a way that I knew he cared about my success. And I also appreciated that he didn't mind when I shed a few tears in his office. He just kept the box of Kleenex right there, and he knew that that just came because I was emotional, because I was so passionate about doing well in the job, and that I would take that feedback and I would really use it to improve my performance. Now the third lesson that I have for my son is that I want him to be a husband who supports his wife's professional dreams, both emotionally and with some elbow grease. And he has a great role model in this. 
my husband, his dad, has moved across the country with me three times for my career. He has been incredibly gracious when we've gone to sales conferences, my sales conferences, and he's been handed the spouse's itinerary with all of the spa treatments and complimentary fashion shows and makeovers circled. Uh, he was as incensed as I was when my son came home from elementary school, and not here, by the way, but came home with the flyer that was encouraging the dads to sign up for the fathers, come talk about your career week, and moms to sign up for the mother's tea. He also has done more than his fair share of school pickups and overseeing homework and loading the dishwasher. You know, and 65% uh, of men who were surveyed recently said that they believed that caregiving responsibilities should be handled equally between spouses at home. But only 30% of them said that that was actually what was happening. For a woman to be able to bring her best self to work, she has to have help navigating all of the challenges outside of work. The babysitting, the doctor's appointments, the broken appliances, and those damn school bake sales. Actually, my son has a pretty good track record of bringing brownies to his school advisory group, so I think we're on the right track with that one. So in closing, why is this important to me? Why do I think it should be important to you? Well, first, some of my most gratifying moments in life have been when I have been part of high performance teams who have set big goals and made great things happen. I want that joy for my son. And he is far more likely to experience that if he is working as part of teams, working for companies where there's an equal balance of power between men and women. In a recent article in the New York Times by Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant, they shared that companies' performance is significantly better when there are more females in leadership positions. Where there is more gender diversity, companies have more sales, more market share, more customers, and more profits. And lastly, I honestly believe that if my son works to make the world better for women, then he will make the world better for everyone. It's not just the females. It is for that quiet male engineer who has awesome ideas, but whose voice is getting drowned out. It is for that young father who is committed to his job, but also wants to make a commitment to coach his daughter's softball team. It is for that male executive who doesn't want to move his family across the country every other year in order to achieve very ambitious career goals. We can get to that meritocracy, that equality, that my son so passionately believes in. But only if he and all of you actively work to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you.